<laughs> How are you? My turn. Wait, oh, yeah. Yeah. You're late. You're late as usual. Here at Modernism Gallery in downtown San Francisco, owner Martin Muller is meeting with one of his most celebrated artists, painter Mel Ramos. Together they're planning a new retrospective of Mel's work. It's the latest chapter in an almost 30-year relationship. The new ones are much bigger than these. This is the Batman. What year was that? The painting was 1962. For the first time, with very sweaty palms, uh, I went uh, to Mel's house. It was like going to a major rock star at the time. Uh, Martin was a breath of fresh air. I mean, well, thank you. an honest, straight shooter. Martin loved my work. That's the Not key. Not loved, that's the key. I do love Mel's that's, that's work. The key. Mel Ramos came onto the California art scene in 1961. American artists like Andy Warhol, Roy Lichtenstein, and Klaus Oldenburg began making work that reflected the flashy motifs of popular culture and mass media. It was called pop art. Pop art was using objects of consumption, images derived from advertising, to critique society by way of crass mass consumerism, but also enjoying the boldness of some of those designs, the very vibrant color interactions, the composition, and allowing the viewer to think about our time through different lenses. Mel's portraits of comic book heroes, famous icons, and playful pinups cemented him as one of the founding fathers of the pop art movement. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. You know, it was 1960. John Kennedy was the president. Everybody, you know, was hopeful that Utopia was just down the road. Pop art was born. It so dazzled the media because it was about the media. It got incredibly amounts of press back then, more so than any other art movement in history. Mel Ramos was born in Sacramento, California in 1935. As a boy, he collected comic books and excelled in his high school art class. When he was 18 years old, Mel met another Sacramento native who would change his life, artist Wayne Tebow. I didn't know who he was at the time, but he showed up in this really weird looking outfit, looked kind of thing that you would expect an artist to wear. He, he just bowled me over. He was so articulate and crisp and th clear thinking and this said all this great stuff. That I decided I wanted to go to Sacramento Junior College, which was up the street from my high school, and study with this guy. Mel spent four years studying art under Tebow. He was my mentor. He instilled in me a desire to make better than average work that I want to make it better than somebody else makes it. Mel graduated in 1957, and 10 years later, he moved to Oakland with his wife, Lida. Mel was dead set on becoming an abstract expressionist painter. I had these de de Kooning demons. I mean, everything I did looked like, tried to look like de Kooning. And then finally one day, I just said, this is nowhere, you know, it's, I, wasn't, I wasn't depressed enough to be a good abstract expressionist. I'm, I was, I'm really an up guy, you know. And uh, I'm just gonna do something that's fun and that I like. So I did a painting of Superman, and my life changed. Mel's tributes to the characters he loved as a child were embraced as the latest contribution to the pop art movement. In 1961, one of his paintings landed in Time magazine. And that was the highlight of my life. This is a magazine that got seen by a lot of people. And all of a sudden, you're, you're, no, you're known. I mean, you're a known commodity after that, especially in the art world. Soon, Mel's costumed lady heroes gave way to news. He paired them with familiar objects from the realm of advertising. I got interested using the brand names, uh, but only 
high profile brand names. And the object also has to be an icon, something you don't even think about. When you see a Coca-Cola sign, you don't even read it anymore. You just know what it says in your mind. Early on, Mel was attacked largely by feminists because of the perception that he was treating the woman as an object of consumption. My uh, argument in defense of Mel's work all along has been that Mel is precisely critiquing a certain perception of the woman uh, uh, seen as an object of consumption. The evangelicals think my work probably is blasphemous. I mean, I feel that people who say things like that about my work, and there are a lot of them, uh, they just haven't looked close enough. Uh, my work is about uplifting the human spirit. That's what it's about. Mel also became known for his portraits of female celebrities. His recent series, The Lost Paintings of 1965, is a tongue-in-cheek reinvention of these early works, updated with contemporary icons. My whole life has always been who I happened to have a crush on at the time uh, in the movies. First of all, I like to go with the face first. That's always very critical in my work. If the face doesn't work, then nothing works. The first layer is just generally to get the color all set, what you think is going to be the color. And then I went over the whole thing again yesterday with a dry brush. Very stiff paint and scumbling, as it's called. It's very dry, and depending upon how much pressure you put on it, you can alter the value of it from dark to light. I mean, this area here, for example, was too dark. She's a blonde, after all. And she sure looks like Scarlett Johansson, doesn't she? <laughs> The public's love of all things retro has created a renaissance for Mel's work. Although he first made a name for himself more than 40 years ago, it's in the last 10 years that he's found a steady market for his art. I'm having shows everywhere. I have waiting lists for my work. Auction prices are going through the roof. I never ever expected to get past a million bucks for one of my paintings, but it happened in England last, last year. I enjoy my work now more than ever because um, I can see progress. You know, I've got 40 years of work to look back on, and I can see progress. There are people who say, you know, that the early work in the 60s was your best work. But that's all about nostalgia also. That's just what they think. My best work is yet to come, is my answer to that. I mean, I have to believe that, you know. Otherwise, what's the point of coming down here?